I, I think increasing the range is, uh, is will make a really big difference to the, the utility of WISPs. I mean, they're, they're, they're kind of intriguing now because you can actually use them, you can program them. Um, but, you know, if you could get the range up substantially, um, then you could start doing things like, you know, having, I don't know, home alarm systems uh, that, you know, have no batteries uh, and no wires going to the sensors, you know, on the windows and, uh, you know, all kinds of things. Uh, some of the applications that I talked about right at the beginning as having motivated us, uh, the idea of being able to track what people are doing uh, in a home based on what objects they're using, you know, that, that turns out to be a very practically important problem uh, because, you know, keeping track of elderly people is, is, is a growing uh, problem that uh, social workers have to deal with. You know, right now, even though the WISP works, uh, it's, the range isn't really long enough to make applications like that truly uh, practical. Um, so I, I think, you know, getting the range uh, up will, will make a really big difference. So uh, I'm going to be talking about some, some ideas um, related to that. So uh, I'll quickly talk about, you know, what, what limits the range of, of today's uh, RF power harvesting devices and how should we expect that range to scale in the future. Um, and uh, <clears throat> there, are, there are sort of two, two aspects to consider there. One is the consumption side. You know, what is the power requirement? And in a way, that's what's been driving uh, things so far. Um, so I'm going to argue that Moore's law um, essentially allows uh, an exponential increase in the range at which uh, you can power uh, wirelessly you know, wirelessly power uh, the, these sorts of devices, and I'll, I'll explain that in more detail. So that's the consumption side. And then on the production side, I'm going to uh, talk about the idea of kind of active harvesters. You can think of these as being inspired by Maxwell's demon, which I'll, which I'll explain uh, uh, what I mean by that. Um, so those are the, the two things I'm going to talk about. So uh, this, this schematic shows uh, the analog front end of a WISP, uh, and it consists of um, basically voltage doubling uh, uh, rectifier that's, you know, a bunch of diodes and, and capacitors. Um, here you see, uh, you know, voltage regulator uh, on the end, and uh, there are various threshold voltages la labeled here. Um, there's 1.6 volt POR, that's the power on reset voltage, 1.9 volts wake up voltage and VDD. That's 1.8 volts. That's that's what the microcontroller typically uh, requires. Um, so the you know what I'm trying to emphasize there is that um, you know, even if you have sufficient power, if you don't have uh, the right voltage, you can't turn the device on, um, and that turns out to be what limits uh, your read range. Um, you know, you you might imagine that. Well, it turns out that the read rate is limited by power. So um, if the device sits there accumulating power uh, until, it, until it has enough, um, then, you know, it then uses the power to, say, talk to the reader, then sits there waiting again. Um, you know, if it can follow that, that protocol, then it'll sort of automatically tune its rate according to the power that's available. Um, so what you might hope and, and, and like is that you know, you could take uh, a device arbitrarily far away from the reader, and it would just decrease its response rate uh, as the power drops. But unfortunately, there's this threshold. Uh, if it doesn't have sufficient voltage, then it can sit there waiting forever. But if the rectifier is only producing, you know, two tenths of a volt or something, then it'll sit there forever and n never get uh, enough uh, uh, voltage to uh, to do anything. Um, so that's why read rate is limited by power and read range is limited uh, by voltage. Now, a couple of other observations there. You know, energy is a conserved quantity. Uh, voltage is, is actually not a conserved quantity. So even though that is a practical limit, uh, in some sense it's not a fundamental limit. So there, there you know, in principle should be ways, uh, even if you, you know, if the harvester as designed now doesn't have... Uh, won't produce sufficient voltage. In principle, there's no nothing physically preventing you from doing something to increase the voltage. Um, of course, there are transformers, various kinds of impedance transformation, 
uh, DC to DC converters, all kinds of things that can increase the voltage. So even though that's a, a practical limitation, it's not necessarily a, a fundamental limitation. Um, so this just sort of illustrates uh, uh, read range. Um, so as a function of um, power in, um, so as you move from left to right, uh, the, the power in uh, to the device is decreasing. You can see the voltage produced by the, the harvester drops. Um, uh, responses per query is, is also dropping because you know it's not just voltage that's dropping, but power is is also dropping. Um, and uh, <clears throat> this is the uh, kind of uh, turn on voltage, the, the the threshold voltage here. So uh, when the output voltage of the harvester the blue line here crosses the red line, which is the turn on threshold. When it drops below there, you know, things uh, essentially stop working. So the uh, packet errors, you know, kind of start going uh, uh, way up at that point. Um, okay. Another uh, kind of relevant thing to look at here is the, the efficiency uh, of the harvester. So uh, the horizontal axis here is, is power in in microwatts and then uh, power out on the vertical axis, uh, the, the left vertical axis. Um, so um, then on the right, we have efficiency uh, as a percentage. So you can see that it, uh, you know, there's a particular power level. You know, again, this all assumes uh, the specific impedance matching and so forth that, that you know, our existing uh, WISP has. So the, the efficiency peaks right at a uh, particular input power level and uh, Right now, it's peaking at about 35 uh, percent, um, and then as the power drops towards zero, the efficiency goes to zero. So, in a way, what I, what I'm thinking about uh, here, when we're asking, you know, is there a way to build uh, power harvesting devices that you could take very far away and still have them function at a, at a low rate? You know, the question is, at this very low power input, uh, you know, are there things you can do uh, to keep the efficiency up so that it doesn't just uh, drop to zero? Uh, like this. Um, so first I'll talk about uh, what I mentioned, uh, uh, the, the, the consumption side. So um, if you look at the number of instructions uh, per second and you look at the power consumption of microcontrollers over uh, you know, the last 20 years and, and simply plot uh, that, from, from that you can calculate uh, instructions per second and, and, and power. And if you just if you just plot that, you find it, it lies uh, on an exponential. Um, in fact, for the purposes of this discussion, instructions per microjoule is 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 the most useful thing to, to plot. And you find that that doubles about every two years. That's just an empirical observation. Um, the freeze transmission formula uh, essentially is the kind of one over r squared uh, power fall off law. Um, so, you know. Again, it's basically a cons consequence of energy conservation. The reader's broadcasting energy; it spreads out. Uh, you know that energy is essentially imagine it being spread over a sphere. The larger, the further away you are from the the reader, the larger the surface area of that sphere. So um, that's why the, the the power ends up scaling, you know, inversely with the square of the distance. So if you solve, you just turn that around and solve for the distance. Um, you, you you find that uh, uh, you know range is proportional to one over the square root of, of, of power. So if you kind of compose those two uh, laws, um, and, and I'll just pause and be a little more specific about what I mean there. Um, if you imagine a fixed workload, so the device is going to be doing something like running that accelerometer example. So it's got to do a certain number of operations per second just to implement the RFID protocol. Um, and do the sensing. Um, so keep that workload fixed, that energy workload fixed. 